Not so many years ago, London and the great cities of Britain were pockmarked with bomb sites, charred piles of rubble overgrown as like as not by a tangle of weeds. Today, new flats and office blocks have grown up out of the holes in the ground. Here and there, a sign of a bomb site, very much tidied up, still remains as a car park or a site for a building plot. And sometimes they've been cleared and turned into playgrounds or elegant gardens, like those near St Paul's in the heart of London. Several things grew up from the old bomb sites, quite apart from weeds, and of course the new buildings which came years later. Among other things, a sport grew out of them, the racing game of Cycle Speedway, a game born in the bricks and rubble of the air raids, a sport for youngsters who were spending nights in the shelters. The first speedway cycle tracks, 90 yards round, were marked out by the boys and girls of the bomb streets using shattered bricks to mark the course. Those were tough days, and they invented a tough little sport to go with them. And Cycle Speedway, which is now organized and has its leagues, can probably claim to be the only sport today to have originated in the crackle of ak-ak fire. Any old dressing up made a change from the world of ration cards and air raid warnings, and any old bike would do. And the game caught on in amazing fashion in the next year or two in the east end of London, in Coventry and up north. The track was usually a shambles, rough and ready, but some of the lads remember the speedway stars who'd been their idols in pre-war days and tried to copy the dirt track technique. Maybe some of them reckoned to be motorbike racing stars themselves when the track started up again. Today, the tracks are more permanent, usually built in public parks in association with the local council. Wednesday night is traditionally practice night, and Roy Baker is one of hundreds who'll be practicing all over the country. Roy, who works as a case repairer, is a cycle speedway veteran in his late 20s, and he's twice won the British Riders' Championship. Jeff Smith has an unusual job too. He manages an archery shop in Forest Hill, London. Like most of the other cycle speedway riders, he doesn't belong to a road or a racing club, and he never touches a bike except on the mini track. These men are specialists. Dave Morris is an exception to the rule. He races on a track near Oxford, and he works near the Harwell Atomic Establishment. So he keeps fit by cycling to work. He too, like most of the others, would like to have a crack at motorcycle speedway sometime. It's still big brother of push bike speedway. Wally Dighton is a bricklayer. Cycle speedway is his top hobby. His kid brother, Norman, is already determined to follow in his tire track. Tire track? Well, the cycle speedway bike has a special tire all to itself. Meetings are held over the weekend. The British League against Manchester sees the best riders from the north come down to Beckenham, Kent. This isn't mainly a spectator sport. It attracts hundreds, not thousands. But it has its own style and ceremonial. Ronald Johnson started in Cycle Speedway as a boy at the end of the war. Now he manages one of the southern teams. Young Norman is one of the fans at the races, determined to be in at the finish himself one day. Back at Earlsfield in South London, another training session begins. Derek Bacon is chairman of the British Cycle Speedway Federation. Derek also was a bomb site rider as a youngster. Cycle Speedway calls for dash and quick judgment. Helmets are barred, thick gloves and thin shoes are regulation and the bike itself free wheels round the tight bends. There are no brakes. The bikes cost about 10 shillings a week to maintain, so with transport, the game isn't cheap for a youngster.
Young Norman likes anything on two wheels, and Friday night finds him at Motorcycle Speedway. The dirt tracks have had their ups and downs over the years, but it's claimed that they're making headway again. Attendances at places like Hackney are up to six or seven thousand, and the sport is particularly popular with the youngsters. Many of the riders have graduated from Push Bike Speedway. Roy Trigg is one of them. He used to cycle for Rains Park. Another graduate from the pint-sized cycle track is Brian Davis, a regular member of the Hackney team. The man behind the team, Len Silver, is yet another of the men who started in the game on the bomb sites. Colin Pratt came into the dirt tracks from the same push bike circuit. Local derbies like the match between Hackney and Wimbledon are sure to draw the fans, young Norman among them. Speedway riders today are usually part-timers. The top men can make up to 2,000 pounds in the six-month season. Unless a man gets to the top, his expenses can be very heavy, and that's why some youngsters stay content with the more modest push-bike racing. But whichever way the result goes, the boys like Norman are there to cheer their favorites. There's less outward excitement on the small track, but it has its own air about it. And when South London races Beckenham, the Dorothy Charles Batson, president of the home team, is there to greet the riders. In this game, everyone's an enthusiast. The riders train all the week, practice starts and circuits at least once a week, and perhaps get five races at the short weekend meeting. So really, their week is building up to less than five minutes on the track. For the race itself, four times round the miniature track takes only about 40 seconds. And this is what it looks like from start to finish. It's 40 seconds that need quick judgment, fast decision, and a cool head. When it's all over, and they're packing up to go home, the boys like young Norman look forward to the day when they'll be racing, and of course, winning. 